my door. Hello. Hello, neighbour. Hi, um, neighbour. Are you aware that your dog has been barking for quite some time this morning? I, I, I don't own a dog. Oh, but I have been practising for the Dog Impression Championships. Welcome to J-Rev. Okay, great timing. I need someone to tell me, honestly, does this sound like a Pekingese? <laughs> hey, J-Rev. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, question for you. Yes. Okay, hypothetical. Okay, Imagine, yeah. mm-hmm. and there's no limits here. Hang on, I get my imagination out. Oh, my head's grown since. Hang on. Okay, it's on. Right. Go. Okay, so imagine mm-hmm. that you had an opportunity mm-hmm. to invent mm-hmm. the ultimate neighbour to live next door to you. Oh. Like, yeah. literally the sky's the, li- the limit. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Okay, uh, so my neighbour would have an Olympic-sized swimming pool with right. all the water slides that would go in and out of the house. And also, they would cook wood fire pizzas all the time. And they'd invite me over any time, and there would be no fence between our houses so that we could just hang out all the time. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. What about you? Well, I've got a two-part idea. Okay, number one. Number one, my okay. my neighbour would own Disneyland. Oh. <laughs> Okay, that's amazing. Yeah, so my neighbour would own Disneyland and I would just be able to go to Disneyland literally every day of the week if that I wanted to. amazing. And you'd be able to skip all the lines because, you know, your friends... I'd have a fast pass. Yeah. And also, number two, mm-hmm. the same person who owns Disneyland yeah. also, like, breeds golden retrievers. And so Disneyland would not be full of people, but it would be full of golden retrievers. And they would just be sitting on the ride with you yeah. and just being such good boys. Just yeah. That's exactly what they would do. Who would you have as your ultimate neighbour? I have no idea. Maybe turn to the person next to you and say, your dream neighbour. Go now. Go. Hey J-Rev, today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw in the style of diary of a wimpy kid. I don't know if you know the franchise, but you should definitely check out the books. I've got some Sharpie textures here. You're going to want a bit of a thicker texture and probably black because that's kind of what they draw all the characters in. You're also going to want enough paper that the Sharpie isn't going to go through to the table underneath. So I'm going to break down how the characters are drawn. I'm going to be drawing the main character. And you can see his head starts off with a bit of a C shape. And then I've got to draw the nose. And that's sort of like a, a U, a big letter U that's been laid on its side. And you don't actually close up the end of the head, you kind of leave it open. And here you're going to draw an eye, and then you're going to draw another eye just a little bit over to the middle there. And they're just plain circles that are filled in. And it's just a simple line for a mouth. Now, we're going to draw a bit of a C shape connected to the bigger C shape for the ear. And this character has three tufts of hair coming out of his head. Now, the characters in this book They have funny little kind of paddle hands, I guess you could call them. They're kind of just loops. You've got three loops and then you've got a thumb. And they're really basic, really simple. And they've got really skinny wrists as well. And you'll notice that it's got one, two, three, four fingers. And that's a really common trick in cartoons. Not like five fingers like real humans. Four fingers are way easier to draw when you're animating. And also, you'll notice that the characters, they don't actually have any sharp bends in their body. So, if this is an arm shape, see how there's that sharp bend in the middle right there? Yeah, they don't have that. So instead, if you're going to be drawing any characters from Diary of a Wimpy Kid, you're going to want to do like noodle arms. So kind of just imagine spaghetti noodles for arms and legs, no knees, no elbows. That's the way that you draw them. And You'll also notice that their feet are kind of chunky. They're just a bit like squished, kind of almost sultana shapes, I guess you could call them. And that's a really easy shape to draw. And you'll notice that the hair is really simple. It's not really a lot of detail and it definitely doesn't look like real hair. Let me show you another character's hair, how they draw it. It's just kind of dashes that kind of come off the top of the head. It's really, really simple. Okay, so now that we know a little bit of how to draw Diary of Wimpy Kid characters, I'm going to draw two characters from there. So I'm going to draw the main character, Greg. So we need to start with the 
big letter C. And then remember, we need to do the nose like it's a U taking a nap. Draw a little, sort of a curved line for the mouth and two circles for the eyes. A little C joined onto the big C for the ear and then three tufts of hair. Now remember what I was saying about no character having sharp edges. This is where you're going to be drawing kind of like really bendy looking characters. So I'm going to draw the front of the body and now I'm going to draw the arms and the hand. And you can see how uh, they're super, super simple. They really shouldn't be very complex. And I'm just going to color in the shorts just as a black because that's all it looks like in the book. And then another noodle leg there. And make sure you draw the other noodle leg on the other side. And of course, you're going to need to put the shoes on the bottom there as well. And remember, they're kind of that squish sultana kind of shape. I'm going to make sure that we draw the other arm. So I'm just going to draw a sleeve and then a bendy noodle arm. And I'm going to make him wave. So I'm just going to kind of splay the hand out just that little bit more. So now I'm going to draw his next door neighbor, Fregley. I love that name, Fregley. Now Fregley's got glasses, so that's really easy to draw as well. It's just two circles next to each other, and they're joined with a line in the middle. Then he's got kind of a U shape for his nose. He's got dots for the inside of his eyes. And then he's got this kind of funny looking hair. So we start with the fringe, the outside of his hair, and he also has kind of spikes on top of his head. Now, he's got a big mouth and he's got teeth as well. So we're gonna draw like a sausage shape and then a handful of little kind of U shapes that are connected together. And we're gonna color that in as well. Now we need to make sure that he's got the rest of his head there. So we just kind of trace around the shape of the sausage mouth. And then we draw C's for ears with little dashes for the inside of his ears. He's a bit more complex than, than the main character. Now that's the base of his scarf and also his shirt. I'm going to draw arms coming off of this as well. And because he's got a black shirt, I'm not going to be too worried about getting it to look exactly right or if anything intersects weirdly because I can colour it in later. We're going to draw some noodle legs as well. They're all really skinny and bendy looking. And here you'll notice that I kind of do a bit of an overlap with the shoes, but it doesn't matter because I know that I need to color those in black. So I'm just going to do that now. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of his top as well. And you can see what I mean about coloring in his sleeves. It kind of blends together. So you don't really see any sort of uh, mistakes that you might have made. And then we need to do the little tail of his scarf as well. So there you go, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. It's a really fun way to draw. And part of being a good artist is learning how other people draw so that you can be well-rounded in your skill set and you can kind of do whatever you want. Hope you enjoyed. Hey Chris. Yeah? While we're on this theme of inventing neighbors. Yes. Let's flip the script. Okay. Can you try and imagine and explain mm -hmm. What would be the worst, like the worst type of neighbour for you to live next door to? <laughs> okay, um, okay. So they would be practising bagpipes with their bagpipe quartet at three in the morning every single day. And also they would be like roasting the smelliest food, but like outside. So it would just fill up my house with all that smell. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't sound like much fun. No. What about you? What would be your worst n nightmare of a neighbour? I think something that I really wouldn't enjoy mm -hmm. is if my neighbour played the same song on repeat for hours and hours and hours Ooh. and hours, for days and days and days and weeks and weeks and months and months, just the same song on repeat for the foreseeable future. You wouldn't be able to get that song out of your head. Never. No. Hey, um, J Rev. Maybe you've been using your imagination hats and maybe you've been thinking about what kind of neighbours could you have in an ideal world? So um, I'd love to hear that. And you know how we can find out? Um, you've said it before. Well, it's actually this little thing called the J-Rev. Love Of course that's what it is.
Yeah. So, uh, j Reb, if you've been thinking about what we've been talking about today, or maybe you just want to show off a really cool drawing that you've done during the week, we'd love to see it on the show. So, get a grown-up's help. If this is the address. Send it in, and maybe we can have it on the show. Yeah. Maybe you hang out with, like, the ultimate neighbour all the time, because maybe you have the ultimate neighbour. So, maybe you could send in what you do with your neighbours. That's a pretty good idea. Yeah. Bye. Hey j today I'm going to be playing Neighbour, Noughts and Crosses. This is a game I've invented and I hope it'll catch on. So, what you're going to need is a piece of paper that you can turn into a card, an envelope, look, something to draw with, and a neighbour who is going to play Noughts and Crosses against you. So, let's get this started. Alright, so I've got my Norse and Crosses game ready. I'm going to mail it with a pen and I just need to drop it off at my neighbour's house now. So let's go. Alright Nick, it's your turn. Let's see if you can beat me. Twenty three seconds later. All right. Yes. Yeah. An eternity letter. Ooh. Five minutes later. Three hours later. Yes. Twelve days later. Alright, now it's time to see who has won. I'm pretty sure I've won. What do you reckon, J-Rev? Got it right here. Oh, it's gonna be. Who's gonna win? <gasps> oh. Nick won. Oh well, we'll have to have another round. Have you ever been super, super thirsty? There's a story in the Bible in a book called John, in chapter 4, that tells us about a woman who is really, really thirsty, and Jesus met her at a well. A well is something that water collects in, because not all places in the world have plumbing like we do here in Australia, and so this woman had to drop her bucket down to be able to get the water from really, really, really deep. Like, imagine being super thirsty and you have to walk to a well to drop a bucket to get some water so that you can drink it. <sighs> so this woman had gone to the well to get some water 
And it's important that I tell you that she was a Samaritan woman because guess who she met at the well? The Samaritan woman met Jesus. Now, Jesus was actually Jewish and this woman was a Samaritan. Can I tell you, in the time that the Bible was written, Jewish people and Samaritan people were not friends. Like, if they'd met at this well together and if it wasn't Jesus, we would not be expecting these two people to be talking to each other. Anywho, Jesus asked the Samaritan woman for a drink. Which was really weird if you remember that these two aren't really supposed to be talking. On top of all of this, this Samaritan woman had um, been up to some stuff. Like she wasn't making super great choices. And so she said to Jesus, uh, y you, don't, you don't know who I am. So you know what Jesus did? Well, he told the woman what she'd been doing which was impossible for him to have known, except we know here at JREV that Jesus is God's son. And that means he knows everything about everyone, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The Samaritan woman's brain basically exploded. How on earth could this stranger know everything about her? Okay, so let's back up, because this story has been pretty weird from the beginning. So, like... These two aren't even supposed to be talking to each other. And then Jesus just knows everything about this woman, even though she's never met him before in her life. Like, what even? Then Jesus offered this woman living water. Huh? Yeah, like, like water that won't ever run out. See, what Jesus was really offering this woman was water that would never run out. Life in God's kingdom forever. And the super weird part about this story... Jesus still offered this life forever in God's kingdom to this woman, even though she hadn't always made good choices. He knew that she wasn't perfect, and he still absolutely, totally loved her. We've been talking a lot about neighbours and being a good neighbour, and here at JREV, we want to follow Jesus' example and show compassion to people. We want to be good neighbours where it doesn't matter what people have done or what's been done to them. We want them to know that we love them because... God loves them. Now, that doesn't mean that we let people walk all over us or treat us in a way that isn't safe. That's not what I'm saying. But do you notice in this story how Jesus had already forgiven the woman for everything that she'd already done, even before they'd had that conversation? Can I tell you that he's already done the same for us and he wants us to do the same to others? Can I tell you another important part of this story is that Jesus reminds us, we don't have to worry about what other people are thinking about us or saying about us when we're kind to other people. It's not even on our radar. And that's a lot easier to do when we know deep down in our heart how good God's love is. We want to share it with everyone. So if you don't remember anything else from today's story, I want you to remember this. Let's follow Jesus' example and let's show compassion to our neighbours. You know what? We can't do that by ourselves, but the good news is that God sent us his helper, so let's ask for some help. Dear God, we thank you so much that you love everyone and that you show compassion to everyone. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is with us, and we pray for the courage to love everybody and to show compassion to all of our neighbours. Amen. Our memory verse is from First Peter. 3, 8. Be like-minded. Be sympathetic. Love each other. Be compassionate and humble. Let's do it one more time. First Peter 3, 8. Be like-minded. Be sympathetic. Love each other. Be compassionate and humble. Uh, hey, Sarah. Mm. Um... Is there something that's supposed to happen at this point in the show? Fireworks. Oh, we haven't had them before, but I feel like there's something that we're supposed to do right now. Yeah, it's the challenge spot. Oh, the j -Rib Weekly Challenge. Yeah. Of course, j -Rib. This week, hmm. I'm going to ask you to ask yourself the question, Who's my Samaritan? What? Yeah, who's my Samaritan? No, 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 we heard you. Oh. We just don't understand. Okay, so, I want you to have a think about who's someone that people don't expect you to hang out with. What do you mean? 
Okay, so we were learning about the Samaritan woman mm-hmm. this week from mm-hmm. your story mm-hmm. and how no one expected Jesus to hang out with her. Right. Because, you see, Jews who were part of Jesus' people, mm. they did not go well with Samaritans. They just, right. you know, they didn't want to go together. Right. Yeah. So, who is like that in your world? And I want you to pray for them and maybe do something positive for them. Like... Maybe there's someone in your class that you don't really get along with very well, or maybe you had a bit of a run-in with them, like last year or something. Yeah, maybe they maybe paid you out about the t-shirt you were wearing, or said that, you know, your sports team weren't very good, or maybe, you know, maybe they might be a bit smelly, which isn't really their fault, but, you know, maybe they're someone that you wouldn't normally hang out with. Think about them, pray for them, and maybe you could hang out with them. Maybe there's like an older person who goes to your church that you've never really spoken to before. Maybe you could go with your grown-up to go and introduce yourself to that older person and tell them a little bit about yourself. That's a great idea. All right, so that's your challenge. That's it for J-Rib. I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to think about the people that maybe I don't hang out with and I'm going to start thinking of ways that I could be a part of their life. Not if I get there first. What? Bye! No, you can't. Okay, okay. Well, I did Steve because Steve, yeah, he needs to be a friend to me. 